Okay, Rose, I am not going to answer this online, but it was a great question you put up for fossils. And half-lives are one of my favorite things to do in chemistry. And uh, one of the easiest things to do, and most people should be able to do this. Sixth graders should be able to do this. <clears throat> so really, as you know, half-life is really uh, radioactive materials want to be non-radioactive. They want to decompose down to something that's non-radioactive. Non they want to be more stable. So the half-life is the amount of time it takes uh, one half of a certain material, any radioactive material, to decay. So during that time, it's called a half-life. So it's a nice, easy way to divide these numbers. So at the beginning, your starting point, uh, this is a nice little chart that I always use when I teach chem. You're starting out with 100% of anything. It doesn't matter. No matter what the grams are, that can always be calculated later. But to get the percentage right now, you're starting out with 100% of the parent material, and you have zero daughter material. You could call this uh, reactants and products, but I like to call it parent and daughter. And so after one half-life, one half-life, you now have half the parent and half the daughter. You're really looking at this. The S or the other is just being tossed over to this side. After two half-lives, now you have, you start out one half-life, you have 50. Now after another half-life, you have 25%. The other 25% gets added onto here. So now you've increased your amount of daughter material and you've decreased the amount of parent material. So as you go through your half-life progression, your parent... Uh, material, your parent quantity always decreases and your daughter always increases. Okay, after your third half-life, you are now split, you split this 25%, you know, you're left with 25, 12.5%. Uh, you take that other 12 and a half, you add it on to 75, you get 87.5%. At your fourth half-life, you take 12 and a half percent and you are left with six and 25 hundredths percent. You take the other six and 25 hundredths percent, add it on to 87.5 and you get 93 and 75 hundredths percent. The one common mistake people make when they are doing this is that they start out here at one. So they're like one half life, I have 100% and I have zero. So for this, typically, if you ask, uh, you know, if you're going to get a, a wrong answer, it's always going to be for four half-lives, it's always going to be 12.5. Because people would say one half-life, two half-life, three half-life, four half-lives. When in reality, this is zero. This is your starting point. Okay, so this is zero time. This is one, two, three, four. So just remember, as long as you start with zero, you're, you're good on your parent material. You're always, you always have 100%. Whatever it is, you always have 100%. And then you can take whatever your quantity left over is you can multiply it by your, uh, by your decimal. But that is the long and short of it. I love doing half-lives, and thank you for putting that up, Rose. You're doing a great job.